Hey guys, Jonathan Lizard here for JM Sports and JMSports.org. How is it going? The week two of the NFL season is over, and I am here to give you uh, my recap on the action, recap on the games, and one thing we found out in week two, I think, is who legitimately the worst team in the NFL is. In fact, it's extremely, extremely obvious who the worst team in the NFL is. Yeah, there's a lot of 0-2 teams, but one of them is considerably worse than the rest. They're in our first game. We get to them right away, so let's do it. And I am talking about, indeed, sorry, Chief fans, the Kansas City Chiefs are the worst team in football so far through two games. Well, it's only been two games. You can't judge them. Uh, yeah, I can. They've been outscored. 89 to 10. Okay. They went to Buffalo week one. Got killed 41 7. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I took that back. They were in Kansas, at home in Kansas City and got killed 41 7. Then they went to Detroit. Now, Detroit's team is no team to. to they don't team to laugh at. They're a very, very good, good team. The Lions are good. The Lions competitive this year, and I think it will stay that way, provided that Matt Stafford can stay healthy. But and then you go to Detroit, and you get completely annihilated, forty-eight to three, eighty-nine to ten, through two games. And another big loss for the Chiefs. As things get worse for them, Jamal Charles done for the year, tore up his knee. Extending his leg for a first down on Sunday. So Jamal Charles is done. You guys are already missing Eric Berry at the safety spot. The Chiefs are a mess. And I honestly don't foresee things getting any better at all for them. I mean, next up for the Chiefs, they get on a plane next week to head to San Diego. That's a division game. San Diego lost to New England and lost to New England in pretty bad fashion. Not going to be happy about that is San Diego. And I think San Diego, I think Vegas is going to have fun with the points spread in that game, I think. I haven't seen the spread yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be something. Meanwhile, on Detroit's side, like I said, I'm not going to lie, okay? As as an analyst, I, enjoy, I love what I'm seeing out of Detroit. It's a great story. They're a lot of fun to watch. As a Packer fan, I'm scared. I dread it. The Lions are as good as they seem. There's a lot of people going, oh, well, the Lions aren't as good at smoke and mirrors. And is it necessarily that they believe it's smoke and mirrors? No, not necessarily. It could be. Well, I'm not going to admit that I think the Lions are good because I look like an idiot. I'm not used to saying that. Well, guess what? I'm here to, I'm here to man up and admit it to you. The Lions are good. Watch out for them. They're going to continue in football games. And their schedule, for the most part, is very, very friendly. There's a lot of wins on their schedule this year, including, I think I'm saying this now, next week. I'm not going to make that not lock for next week's picks, but I do think the Lions beat the Vikings uh, next week. Um, the Lions look good. They continue to look good. Stafford continued to roll, um, and that's exactly, like I just said, that is exactly what needs to happen for the Lions to continue to win games. Stafford has to roll 294 yards in the air for Stafford. Four touchdowns and only one pick. Um, David Best. Best is a really good running back. He is. Problem with Best is he's shaky. He's he's injury prone. He's a good running back. I think if Javad, if Javad Best could stay healthy, he could rip things up in the NFL and he could rip up the NFC North. Unfortunately for him, he just can't seem to stay healthy. Um, I didn't watch. You know, I have the NFL Sunday ticket. I went back to my mom's. We watched a lot of games, uh, and so I saw a little bit of more. I saw at least a little bit of most of the games. Um, so, I, so I did see a little snippet here and there of this game, and from what I saw, and even watching the highlights, I was impressed. Matt Stafford and Calvin Johnson are going to put up huge numbers this year together, I think, provided they can both stay healthy. They've already put up, um, joint numbers, I believe Calvin Johnson has four receiving touchdowns through two games. 
you do the math quickly, and that is 32 receiving touchdowns on the year for Calvin Johnson. Oh, that's pretty good. That's that's really good. Uh, next up, we've got Buffalo and Oakland. Man. <sighs> Buffalo gets the win over Oakland, 38-35. You know, with a late field goal in the fourth quarter. I did see, uh, didn't see all the games, saw a good, I, I honestly saw about the last five minutes, but was paying attention to the score, pay attention to all the scores at least. Um, and the Raiders at one point in time up twenty one up twenty one to three in this contest. And you know, everybody beat Buffalo last week. So Buffalo fans are ecstatic. There's people on NF there's there was a guy on the NFL thirty two show on ESPN two that said the Buffalo Bills are playoff team. They annihilated the Chiefs. Well guess what? The Lions annihilated the Chiefs too. Only difference is Lions are a playoff team. If the Lions played the Bills, I think the Lions would Cream them. Now, I mean, yeah, here we go. I'll tell you right now. 21 to 3 is what the score was going into the second half, going in the third quarter. The Raiders had a 21 to 3 advantage. And then in the third quarter, two Bills touchdowns, a Fred Jackson 43 yard run, and a Steve Johnson 7 yard pass. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, 7 yard pass to Steve Johnson, rather, just like that, makes the 17 10 game. Then we're going into the fourth quarter. Fred Jackson, 1 yard run again. Ryan Lindell gets the extra point, 24 21. Buffalo leads. Raiders try to extend it a little bit, taking the 28 24. When Darren McFadden from, uh, takes a 12 yard pass from Jason Campbell in for the score. Um. You know, and then it just it didn't look good for the Raiders. And the Raiders are not a bad team. And I was stupid with something that I said last week. I'm going to retract it right now. I'm really surprised that nobody... Uh, actually, no, you know, I'm not, I, I said the Raiders, I think, could possibly be a playoff team. I'm not going to retract that. I think the, the only way they can make the playoffs is if they can get by San Diego and win the division. I said they could possibly be. I didn't guarantee they were going to make it. I think it's either going to be San Diego or... Uh, Oakland out of that division. I can't see Denver winning the West, and Kansas City is definitely not going to win the West. Uh, that's almost a guarantee unless they have um, a miraculous turnaround, and miraculous is probably not even the right word to describe it. Uh, the Bills, meanwhile, I'm still not buying them. You know, you beat on a bad Chief team, and and you went home and had to come from behind win against the Raiders. Yes, you looked good because you overcame a 21 to 3 deficit, but I am still not buying them. Really, I'm not. Um, I'm just not. Minnesota and Tampa Bay. The Vikings have trouble. The Vikings, I believe, are up 20 to nothing in this game. I believe that. I did watch this game, and I, I believe that that's what it was, and they just flat out blew it. They just flat out looked bad. Donovan McNabb, I'm not ready to say that Donovan McNabb is done. I don't think Donovan McNabb is done. I do, however, think that he's definitely on the downcline of his career. Um, and if you're the Vikings, I don't know why you went with McNabb. And, you know, towards the end of the year, he might put the NFL on fire, and then I'll look back at this and go, well, that's why they did it. But right now, Donnie McNabb isn't going to get it done for you. He doesn't look tremendous. Adrian Peterson, and I know it's been it's really been this way for a while, but Adrian Peterson's the one that's really carrying this team on his back. Well, Peterson has problems with putting the ball in the turf. He does that a lot. And that was one of the things that we saw on Sunday. Uh, the defense, I was really surprised by the collapse in Minnesota's defense. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying that Minnesota's defense is extremely spectacular, but, you know, I mean, they held up pretty well to San Diego, and then you turn around, you can't hold up to Tampa? Eh, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know about that one. I was very, very surprised 
with that there. Uh, New Orleans and Chicago, another game that surprised me. Yes, I picked New Orleans to get the win, uh, but I also, but um, for my pick them that I do, um, away from the camera, that involves the spread, uh, the spread was, I believe, eight and a half. I picked the cover, I picked the, the, the Bears. I didn't think the Saints were gonna, going to cover, and the cover, the Bears, God dang it, the Bears just looked bad. They looked bad. I, I watched that game, too. We watched three games at a time, um, and I watched that game, too, and that game just was not good for the Bears. Um, I don't really know what you can say. I, I figured the Bears would play a lot better, especially after the death of Brian Erlacher's mom. I kind of figured they would gather around that and use that as, as motivation, but it didn't happen. Uh, next up, we've gotten, I'm trying to rush through these a little bit, because we're only 1, 2, 3, 4, we're only go doing the fifth game now, and we're 11 with them. So, um, this is pretty fun. Tennessee and Baltimore. Baltimore didn't look very good. Tennessee looked good. Um, I was really surprised by this one. Baltimore went, went around and, and beat up uh, Pittsburgh pretty bad, and uh, Tennessee came in, you know, Tennessee went and, and beat up on Baltimore too, and Tennessee got the win. Cleveland and Indianapolis. The Colts had chances to win that game. They were in front in the beginning, or not, eh, yeah, they were in front in the beginning, I guess. And they were in front several times. Cleveland opened it up a little bit towards the end. Cleveland got the win, just like I said. Cleveland looked good. They are uh, one and one. The New York Jets, Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, that one speaks for itself. The Jaguars, not good. Luke McCowan was the starter. He got pulled. Blaine Gabbert got playing time. Be interesting to see where the Jaguars go there. First starting quarterback. New York Jets. Uh, look good. You know, obviously, they put up 32. They got the 32-3 win. Only question I have, Rex Ryan, your quarterback, went through a concussion test the prior week. Why have him in late in a blowout game? He got hit once and got a little bit staggered. Yikes. Not very good coaching there, in my opinion. Pittsburgh and Seattle. I said that that was going to be my lock of the week. Said Pittsburgh was going to dominate that game, and they did quite well. 24 to nothing. Pittsburgh gets the win. Pittsburgh looks good. Scary moment for Pittsburgh, though, as Ben Roethlisberger takes a hit, his knee buckles, and he will be all right and is expected to play against Indianapolis next week on Sunday Night Football. So a little bit of a scary moment there. Seattle is just in big, big trouble. Um, Washington and Arizona. Washington, I really expected Washington to handle Arizona a little bit better than they did. They did win 22-21. I'm a believer in Rex Grossman. Under this Washington system, I am a believer in Rex Grossman. Are they good enough to win the division? No. Are they good enough to compete for the division? I think so. Win? Not. I don't know. I, I really don't think they're... I think that division is going to be a smash mouth. You know, whoever wins just enough games, whoever wins the, the division games, I think is pretty much going to be who's going to end up winning that division. And I, I really don't think it's Washington. They're getting younger, so they're getting better. Washington, I think, will continue to improve over the next couple of years and will be great down the stretch. Arizona, uh, I don't really know what to say. They're just, they're Arizona. Uh, Green Bay and Carolina. I was really impressed with the way the Panthers looked. Really impressed with the way Cam Newton looked. Not going to lie. Cam Newton. Uh, in the game, puts up 432 yards. He got over 800 yards passing already in two games. Very impressed by the way he looks. Cam Newton, I said he was going to be a good one. I said it was going to take a while. I was wrong. He's a, he's a good one now. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and Packers didn't look that great defensively. They looked good offensively. They didn't get on the, on the field at all in the first quarter. Well, they got on the field in the first quarter once. It was a 3 and out drive, so um, you, know, you could even say they didn't really get on the field. Uh, Packers looked rough. They they do need a little bit of work defensively, especially going to Soldier Field in Chicago next week. Packers do get, however, the uh, thirty to twenty three win. Dallas and San Francisco game winning overtime. Dallas continues with the drama. Tony Romo cracked rib, missed the first drive in the second half. Or a couple, he missed a couple drives in the second half. Kitna came out, looked good in the beginning, and then threw a couple of picks. Romo came back, played well. The Cowboys were down 14 to nothing at one point in time. Romo led his team back through pain and all. They get the 27-24 overtime win. Uh, and then it comes out that uh, Tony Romo also played with a punctured lung. His status for next week is unknown. San Francisco really impressed me. Jim Harbaugh 
is going to have that team right where he wants them. This is a this is a playoff caliber team right here in San Francisco. I think I really do think that I've watched uh, I watched them play last week and I watched them play a little bit in week one and I am very very impressed with this 49er team. New England and San Diego, uh, 35-21. New England gets the win. New England just outplayed San Diego by quite a bit. San Diego looked okay at times. Um, tried to have a late rally, wasn't going to happen. New England, there's no stopping New England right now. 400 and some more yards passing, 423 yards, more yards passing for Brady. He's over 900 yards for the year already. This Patriot team scares me. Imagine a lot of Sun 7, and we all know what happened there. Houston and Miami. Um, Miami did look good again. Houston continued to look good. They're 2-0, 230 passing yards for Matt Schaub. Um, and Miami, like I said, just con did not continue to look at it. Uh, here's what I think. I think Tony Sperano, his job is in major jeopardy, I think. Dolphins do bad this year, Sperano leaves. Denver and Cincy. Uh, Denver got a 24-22 win, but ultimately did not deserve it. Denver is a mess. We knew it. Uh, they were a little banged up in the wide receiver position. Tim Tebow got some... Uh, exposure at the wide receiver position. Not a whole lot, I guess, from what I was told. I didn't really see any of the game, but from what I heard, it wasn't a whole lot. Um, Cincinnati, Andy Dalton looked good. 332 yards passing. Cincinnati is going to be better than what I thought. I don't, you know, they're not going to be a bottom of the barrel garbage team, um, but they're not going to win a whole lot of football games either. Um, Philadelphia and Atlanta, of course, the game that everyone talked about last week uh, was. Mike Vick returned to Atlanta. Well, well, for Mike Vick, he had a lot of supporters, uh, not a whole lot of booze, more cheers. Man, it was a really good football game. Thirty-five, thirty-one. Atlanta gets the win. Vick goes out with a concussion. Um, very, very um, bummed about that because that game I think could have been even better if he does not go out. Uh, and last but not least, we have the Giants and Rams last night. The Rams looked like they were going to be able to keep pace with the Giants throughout most of the day, but just. Costly Ram turnovers give the Giants the win. You can tell that the Giants still don't look that great um, because they're so banged up defensively. But they're all right. They survived 28-16, the win there. So there you go. There's your look at the NFL action. Might not have been the greatest, but I got off to a slow start, which kind of forced me to rush to the rest. Overall picking, I did pick the Giants yesterday. I sent my baseball video. I did not get... Um, for I set up my baseball video for today. I didn't get a baseball pick video up yesterday, therefore I didn't have a pick up for yesterday. Uh, I recorded one, but YouTube would not upload it. Uh, so we finished the week 13 and three. We are 22 and 10 on the year. 161 wins, 97 losses. Uh, because we're doing so crappy for time right now, I'm not gonna do anything uh, as far as subs right now because I haven't looked. Um, so I'll do them in tonight's baseball pick video. So that has been a Maybe not the greatest, somewhat kind of crappy, maybe depending on what you think. Recap of week two in the NFL. I am John Lemons up for JM Sports 100 and JM Sports.org. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.